Welcome, dear listeners, to The Reformed Gamers, episode 226, the show all about theology, video games, and anything else that we can think of. I'm your host, Logan. And I'm I his co-host. Co- uh, oh, go, uh, you, you, you first. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, you, man, you. Go ahead. I mean, you're here now. You, you go for it. Uh, it's your uh, podcast. And I'm his co-host, Micah. And joining us on this episode is, you know him as the handsome bearded man, Adam. Welcome back to TRG, man. Yo, if you have listened to the pre-show, I am excited. I've got so much to say. I've got, it is September 14th and I have not been on for about nine months. So I've got, I got some good news to share. I got some excitement. I am, again, I don't know if I'd have the energy every time because I've got three kids and one on the way, (laughs) but I've got it tonight. And so I'm, I'm so grateful to be back and just... It's funny. I've been talking to people about the podcast over the last nine months and saying, you know, I tell people I was on a podcast about video games for seven years and it's still we, you know, I I have to be like, you know, well, I'm not technically on the podcast anymore, but I'm always like, we, 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 Mm -hmm. as I'm talking about it. So I still, you know, it's still a part of me. I still feel like I'm one of the guys, but life has just been different with fostering and ministry kids all over the place so but i am i'm so excited to be back and get to cut it up with you guys for a little bit and talk about the the steam deck steam yeah man it's gonna be awesome because it's kind of like what me and michael were both saying in the pre-show is like we don't really have a whole lot to say on the episode (laughs) pretty much adam's gonna do all the all the heavy lifting i'm just i'm gonna ask questions about you know um playing certain games on the switch or not the switch the steam deck uh you know of the metroid genre and uh and how that is but uh <laughs> but well, things well, that people so- could be potentially playing what am i yeah, i don't yeah. know but some some people could be right if right Nintendo somewhere is listening, some people. i don't need them coming after me just just what are all the possibilities of the scene deck we're gonna, we're gonna get into that a, a little bit later on in the show um but yeah so dear listeners just a few things before we get into the show uh proper as always housekeeping new content going up on youtube um usually uh in a bit of a um transitioning sort of season right now um for those of you who maybe don't follow me uh publicly or follow me on social media or anything like that um me and my wife we've been on this journey to adopt since 2019 Um, we recently got a call uh a week or two about a week ago uh when this web episode comes out and we finally got matched so now we're just waiting to waiting for the day of i can't even talk at this point (laughs) we're just waiting for for the for the baby to be born we're going to meet with the expecting mom a couple more times uh, from now until until uh, when the baby's born, and uh, and then we get to go we get to go finish up the adoption and and hang out and start life uh start life as parents. So we're we're very much looking forward to that. So yeah, it's very gonna cool. be it's gonna so be awesome. We're, we're super stoked. Glad it's, it's finally waiting, here. I mean, God teaches us in the waiting. I mean, I, you know this over the last three years of waiting. <laughs> yeah. We went through two years of it with our adoption. And it's yep. just waiting is hard. Like I've got a book to write. I'm waiting. You know. Yeah. Let me, Logan. Um, could you tell us briefly? Sorry, sorry. I thought I thought you were done, Adam. No, you're good. Uh, can you tell us briefly, like, how did you and Camilla get the news, and like, what was y'all's reaction? I guess. Yeah. So you know, we, we're we're with this agency, um, and we've just been kind of working with them, gone through a few different hoops and things like that. Um, but we got, um, what was it? I was handing out. Yeah, I was doing a test for my students. And of course, you know, while they're doing their tests, they're busy doing stuff and they're working. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna check my email real quick and just see it, just see what's in there. So I opened up the email. Um, is in it's refresh and I saw an email from our adoption agency and, uh, they just said, Hey, give us a call immediately. And I'm like, okay, that's either good news or that's bad news. So wow. which is it? I'm like, if they told you via email that you were matched, I got some issues with this agency, but they said they right. call you. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, they said they call. So we called and they were like, so we have a potential match. Here's the specifics of it. Um, you know, obviously don't go sharing with it. So that's why, you know, in case sure. people are wondering, like, why isn't Logan sharing a lot of details? Because we because we can't. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so we so we called and got uh, connected with the expecting mom and uh, talked with talked with her for a little bit. And uh, yeah, and the next day we got a um, we got another call from our agency and then they said, well. 
you know, she's she's cool with you guys. She likes y'all. If you guys are good with it, we'll go ahead and change your status to match, and we'll get you guys going through the next phase. And we're like, let's go. Wow. <laughs> so that is like it, the most sweet like phone call to receive when you've been waiting. Yeah. And like it's it's been funny too because it's been kind of a roller coaster for me. There's moments where like I don't really feel it. And I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, here we are, let's keep going. And there's other moments I'll look back on that email or I'll look through like the next um like paperwork we gotta sign or some training mm-hmm. videos we gotta watch. And I'm like, oh crap, I'm gonna be a t- <laughs> it feels very real. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you don't get to, I mean, you've been waiting for three years, but it's not like when you're expecting a biological child, you're like, I've got nine basically 10 months to get yeah. myself ready. Yeah. I mean, you've got till what, December or something like December, that. Yeah. You've got a little bit. So it's yeah. like, okay, we've got some time to really be get our, getting our mind transitioning. Cause people are like, you've been waiting for three years. Aren't you ready? It's like you're paper pregnant. That's what they say. Now you're yeah, ready. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes you can be paper pregnant for two weeks or That's a day a or three months. But it's like your yeah. mind is just now starting to turn. It's like, Oh, this is like really happening. Like, yeah, yeah. there is a day. Yeah. There is a, an expect, again, not that the baby, I mean, our baby went nine days over. And so, but there's a, there's a, there's a time. Where, so that's, that's huge, man. It's a relief, yeah. but it's still stressful because yeah. until <laughs> things have been signed, it's scary. And so yep. there's definitely still a need for prayer for the yep. mom, for you guys. But it's still exciting, nonetheless. Yeah. It's all those. It's attention. It's all of those things together. Yeah. Um, so, but it's huge. <clears throat> so yeah, but this will be this will be a fun next couple of months. So, but like Adam said, dear listeners, still uh, continue to pray for us because, um, as Adam said, any anything can happen. So uh, just be praying for us and mm. uh, be praying for the mom as well and uh, and the baby as well. But we're yeah. we're pretty. So stoked, here's the man. thing: you gotta you know. I'm, I'm sorry, as you know, I'm passionate about this thing. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, God has given you, you know, adoption is your goal, but God has now given you a ministry to a mom for mm-hmm. three months. Yeah, God called, and again, it's it's really a lifetime. Uh, is it? Are you able to share? Is it open adoption? Uh, that's kind of getting into stuff that that I okay. can't really share at the moment. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. If it is an open adoption. <clears throat> And it sounds like there's been some communication, so maybe there it is. Mm-hmm. But then you've got you've got a lifetime, honestly, of how do we do this well? Yeah. And it's it can it's it's it, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's hard. But at least for the next three months, as as much as you're able, you've got a ministry to a mom who's yeah. making some really hard decisions that you get to be a part of. And so uh, people praying for again how you steward those opportunities because it's vital. When we were waiting, we got matched six. Uh, we had six meetings with moms before the seventh one where we finally got chosen. And we hated it. We hated not getting picked, but we said, okay, God, yeah. apparently you're giving us a ministry to some moms who are hurting and we can mm-hmm. at least tell them we love them. We care for them. We're praying for them and we don't want to add more stress to their lives. So don't let this decision on our end. And so again, you've got just a great opportunity to love on a mom um, in the midst of some challenging circumstances, not only, yeah potentially caring for their baby for the rest of their life, but also ministering to her in that process. So it's, yeah. a, it's a big opportunity. Yep. No, that's a good reminder. That is a good reminder and really a good, uh, I think just a good window into kind of what adoption is for me, those that are listening that aren't super familiar with kind of how it all works and what that looks like. But yeah, man, you, you nailed it uh, right on the head, kind of how, how it works and what it all entails. So we're, we're hardly through the intro and Adam's already bringing the heat, man. It's, it's how, it's how it goes, man. He's, he's had all this pent up for however many months and he's gonna, he's gonna just bring it out. So. I started an adoption and foster care ministry up here in New York. I got, Hey, there you go. What do you want, baby? So my much in your real house this episode. Exactly. <laughs> I'll only but, come on. If you would have had me on for Metal Gear, I played them, but I would have been like, what? I don't even know what's happening. Like, this is our new house. <laughs> I don't want to be like, Lule, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but, yeah, speaking of, I don't have a good way to segue into this. <laughs> like So so recently, right, let's just roll into this as, as best as we can as we do on the show. You know, 
it's been a while since we've talked about the news a little bit on the show. You know, when, when Micah jumped on, we were kind of wanting to do like a news recap each episode, but we kind of got away from that because of, you know, different topics. It is what it is. It happens. Yeah. Um, but recently Nintendo direct happened, new state of play happened. And, um, I mean, I don't really have much to say, but I figured we would, you know, kind of take a minute to talk about maybe some some quick takeaways, some things that kind of stood out to us. Um, obviously, the thing that stood out to me the most was the glaring n- omission, the glaring just missing mm. spot. Metroid Prime Trilogy, Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD. Yeah. Jeff Thank Grubb you, Jeff. Let us down, man. How dare Jeff. you? You, you, hmm, hmm. I still, I'm not going to get on the soapbox. I ranted enough to a group of friends yesterday <laughs> about it. But I mean, guys, what, what do you think, Adam? Let's kick it to you, man. Handsome bearded man. Any any oh. standouts from the Nintendo Direct? Let's start there and then we'll switch over to state of play here in a little bit. You know, it's funny. I, I'm just kind of flipping through. I, I thought it was, I mean, of course, Breath of the Wild. Well, I want to say Breath of the Wild. Uh, Tears of the <laughs> Kingdom looked great. I mean, they, you get games like this where I, I, I want to know when the date is. That's the biggest thing that I saw was the last blackout screen into May, whatever, 9th or whatever it was of 2023. That was the biggest thing in the direct for me. I know it's coming. The game is going to, I can only assume it's going to be great. Um, I just want more in that world. And, and you know, I, you can always go back and explore more, more but ain't nobody got time for that. I want a new iteration. And so, I, of course, uh, Tears of the Kingdom look good. And it's, I mean, there's two other takeaways. Well, I guess there's a lot of different takeaways, but they had so many like Animal Crossing X farming simulator the games. Farming games, showed. yeah. I'm like, what? It, like, I just, I mean, it was overwhelming how many, it was like every other game, if not like five in a row, were some sort of simulator. But, you know, some of the little things is some of the takeaways. I, I thought like, they're not huge things, but some of the the updates to uh, strikers, the updates to uh, switch sports, adding the golf game, like some of those things I'm kind of watching. I'm like, you know, the Mario Kart, the next wave of courses for that. Those mm-hmm. little things are the things that really piqued my interest more than some of the big things. Pikmin 4 doesn't really do much for me. I enjoyed Three Houses, Fire Emblem another fire moment i don't maybe i'll get it maybe i won't i don't know um time is just different now but overall i mean it was okay i mean people are talking about zelda and the same thing we'll get into the state of play in a second people are talking about god of war there um the big thing is what mattered and it hit but i mean it's kind of crazy that seafood's coming Mm -hmm. to the yeah to the switch I haven't got to talk about seafood since um, it came out, but that's a game I loved. Um, But yeah, so those are just some general thoughts. Nothing crazy by any means, but Zelda looks great. And then some of the other things, I think there was something for a lot of people in it, but it was probably like a six out of 10, seven out of 10 at most, just because Zelda was so good. Yeah, yeah I, th- I think the main thing that um, Adam, you probably didn't mention, was Octopath Traveler 2. That, that's the other big boy. Um, mm-hmm. That's going to uh, uh, hit home for a lot of people. Um, the, the odd thing that struck me is that this one is obviously coming to Switch, but it's also coming to PlayStation yeah. and not Xbox, whereas the first Octopath came to Xbox and not PlayStation. So I was kind of scratching my head about why they would do that, but... Regardless, maybe they'll all eventually come to everything and it'll all be good. But um, yeah, Octopath 2 looked awesome. And then those N64 games were like, yes, yes, that one. Yes, that one too. Yes, 1080 Snowboarding. It was like every one of them, I was like, dude, they're, they're, those are some, that was a great lineup of N64 games they tossed on there. Um, so those were the two things outside of Tears of the Kingdom, which I still got to get used to saying. Um, which that um, Breath of the Wild slash Tears of the Kingdom, like you just, you yeah. just naturally don't want to say Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild. And it's like, no, that is the first game. I do want to say I'm proud of the uh, gaming journalist community at large for not making a dumb article about how that was um, insensitive to the UK and the death of the Queen, because uh, oh, I thought that could geez. possibly be a thing uh, because of the timing hmm. of it. Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, I'm almost but, surprised. Uh, now that you said that. I'm almost surprised it almost didn't get pushed back. 
Uh, yeah, well, that, when they said that, I, that's the first thing I literally thought. I was like, hmm, interesting timing, but uh, there will be a mm. piece on Kotaku about that, surely, and n- I never saw it. So kudos, gaming community. It seems like you're getting better, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I almost wondered when I was looking at it, I was kind of wondering if maybe the, it's, it's supposed to be pronounced like Terrors of the Kingdom, just because of like... Mm how there's different floating islands of the kingdom. Yeah. And I'm like, it could be a double meaning. I don't know. It could be, but we'll wait to see. It's kind of I mean, like a link to the past too. Cause there were like tears there that allowed people to go uh, yeah. back mm-hmm. and forth in time. Yeah, That's true. So should be, should be cool, but um, it's not as cool as uh, you know, Metroid prime trilogy or, you know, anything no. else like that. No, of course not. Again, I, like I said, I have nothing. I, I've already ranted and raved about the Nintendo Direct to some other people. I'm not going to do it here on the podcast because uh, you boys, you boys, a little salty. You know what I'm not salty about though is the state of play, which hot diggity dog, death <laughs> can take me when it earns me, dude. Like Kratos. Oh my, that. I'm just, Clearly, that was my takeaway. I haven't, uh, um, you know, when we were talking in the pre-show a little bit, like Adam was saying that he hadn't seen a whole lot of God of War Ragnarok. I was sitting there thinking, like, this is really the first thing for me that I've actually watched of God of War Ragnarok, and oh man, did it! It got me hyped. I didn't really care about the game before this, and then I saw that trailer. And I was like, nope, this is this is this is this is hype. Seeing seeing Kratos and Thor charge at each other, I was like, you know what? Mm. yeah this is exactly it. what sony needed to show with god of war i feel like the yeah. last couple of showings i think they've shown it twice in some way shape or form and both okay. of them were kind of like huh that's that's good but just kind of whatever this is like the right. story trailer that gave you a good look at, at the at the story and um just gave you a lot of interesting um kind of uh setting like set pieces that you hadn't seen up to this point yeah and boy it was just a really well put together trailer and um it just skyrocketed my hype even further than it already yeah. was. So yeah, that was easily, easily the takeaway uh, for, for, for the state of play. Yeah. The so. game is going to be gorgeous. I mean, every, you could tell they were showing off like just some of the, the visual and I was watching it, I think on my phone at dinner and I was still blown away just on the little screen, seeing it all. But I can't imagine when I'm watching it on my TV, 4k, PlayStation 5, like, you know, people were talking about the arrow that Atreus shot. That was cool. But my most memorable was that big, like, was it a jellyfish or something like that? Yeah. That's, like, yeah. coming out of the sky. Like, that's where I'm like, geez, like, there are going to be some scenes. And I have mm-hmm. just, it's going to be a beautiful game. The gameplay we're anticipating is going to be great. And like I was saying in the pre-show, there were moments I, I mean, at the ending, I'm like, laughing clapping saying yes like in the final <laughs> cutscene, in the final fight in the last god of war i'm just like what a like perfect ending that fight was so good and then yeah. you see the last scene in that trailer and you're like oh man we're set up for another epic story epic ending mm-hmm. it's it's gonna be it can't get here soon enough i'm like okay i'll talk about it a little bit more when we get what you've been playing i'm like Whatever game I start next is done by November. It's <laughs> it's, it's done. I, if, yeah. if and that seems a long time away, but again, I ain't got all the, t- the gaming time in the world, right. so I got to be strategic. I'm not yeah. starting up a 50 hour game because whatever is happening is stopping in November. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Kratos is going to show up and put a put a stop to whatever it is you're playing and i'm just, just expecting the game case and an axe to be stuck on my front door when i wake up that morning <laughs> <laughs> just talk oh man i still <laughs> i still can't there's certain scenes in games that stick with you and just seeing in that trailer the kratos's axe colliding with mjolnir and just freezing in the air and then they r- call him back and then charge it. i'm just like <sighs> I went back and watched that scene several times because I'm like, this is one of the coolest scenes in a game I've Seriously. ever seen. Yeah, I, I, I think can't Sony think of Santa Monica trailers. Oh yeah, my gosh. I, I think they're really gonna blow the scope out, kind of like the way they did with the old trilogy with God of War three. That game, yeah. like the bosses and the the scope, just felt just larger than bigger, life. Bigger, yeah. I think that's like, what this one's built for PS five. We played the last one on PS four. This one is like got the power. It's got all the infrastructure to be able to do yeah. just crazy things. And I mean. 
you're expecting a lot more, but I mean, some people are even like tweeting out Alana Pierce, who's like a writer for the game or whatever now. And she was like, guys, you haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, I saw a lot like, of devs say that from Santa I was about Monica. to bring that up, and I'm just like, good grief. If that if we haven't seen anything yet and, and I got that hyped, oh, yeah, can't wait to play the whole game. Let's go. Can't wait. As always, dear listeners, if you had a particular game that stood out to you, let us know uh, in all the different places that you can connect with us. Uh, links are in your show notes. But speaking of games that we're playing, like games that we're actually playing right now versus the ones that we're waiting for, let's get into what we've been playing. And Adam, dude, okay. You got one game in here. I put a little little eye looking at an emoji thing and highlighted it, dude. T- tell me, tell me, talk to me about Metroid Prime, man. Let me live vicariously through you. All righty. Again, we were kind of laughing about how, you know, when you leave ministry, sometimes you're like, hey, I'm not a pastor anymore. Some people's churches don't <laughs> want them to drink. It's like, hey, I'm not a pastor anymore if I want to take a drink here or there. I'm not on the podcast officially anymore. There are some gray areas in regards of emulation that some people would do. <laughs> some people, I'm not saying it's me, some people might do that. And so I've got this handy dandy Steam Deck right here that we're going to be talking about on the on the podcast. And I've learned a lot in the last three months about what you can do with a PC uh, that I have not done in a long time as a console gamer. And so there's this thing called a Metroid Prime hack where basically it turns Metroid Prime into a legit first person shooter dual stick um I'm so jealous and it's got the shaders i don't even know what shaders are but they've got shaders on these this prime hack that makes the game look all good and mm-hmm. so i've kind of been joking in our fantasy critic chat like oh i'm surprised metro prime didn't come out because i've been playing it hd for the last <laughs> three super months super savage and by the way man it's uh, it's <laughs> and so and now <laughs> if you remember if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time i tried to play it on the gamecube Mm -hmm. i don't know probably six years ago and i got to a point where i hit a bug and i I messed your save up like i was i was supposed to get some i don't know if the super missile or something like that Mm -hmm. but i it wasn't it wasn't there in my game and i refused to go back and play it again because i'm like i've put too much time in this i'm not doing it again now i'm also i'm kind of i'm like I'm wondering if I didn't do something because in the room where you got to do stuff, I'm like, maybe I didn't scan the stuff. I'm mm-hmm. going to say it was a bug because I feel like I looked up videos. I mean, mm-hmm. I was like, did I forget something? So so, so to go back and play it now, I don't know, it's probably three or four hours in to where I was. And I mean, it's a, it was a great time. I didn't read any of the lore I didn't oh, read any man. of the pirate data, so I don't really know what's going on. I just know I'm <laughs> going around exploring in rooms, destroying stuff. Uh, I finished it last week. It was it was a good time. I'm sure it would mean a lot more if I knew what was going on in the story. <laughs> yep. You got to read but those scan logs, man. I ain't, I ain't reading those scan logs. I, mean, uh, I, got, uh, I got an hour to play a day, maybe. I'm not going to spend 30 minutes reading that that's pirate fair. log. That's fair. That's fair. Ain't nobody got so I just need that. to go back and now I'll watch the story synopsis is what I need to do. Like, tell me what actually happened in the game that I just played. There you go. But man. I mean, it was good. I'm glad I did it. It's funny playing it this way on the Steam Deck because I'm not playing with the traditional GameCube controller and the, the key findings. I had to do all. And that's the great thing about the Steam Deck. You can customize all the things. So I had different key bindings to do different visors to do different missiles. Oh, it was kind of so complicated, awesome. mm-hmm. but, uh, but I finished it and it was, I had a really good time with it. I'm glad I went back and played. I'm probably going to give a break before I go into, um, was it prime echoes Two? Yeah. Prime two echoes. Mm-hmm. And so I don't even know, is it, you hear people talk about prime is two supposed to be pretty good too. It depends on who you talk to. I personally really liked two and I thought it was better than the first game, but you have other people who say like two is a bit of a downgrade because of all the backtracking and all that. But I'm like, you're supposed to backtrack in these games. So I felt it, like I was doing a ton of backtracking in the first one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like it just, it just geez. depends. I thought two was better than the first one, but, but that's me. I'm, I'm probably one of the only people who thought that. But it's, I mean, again, just we'll get into more of some of the stuff when we talk. But the ability of to be able to do this on the Steam Deck has been, it was just super cool. I remember sending you guys a video like, 
half the time I'm messing around with this, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not a PC gamer. Like yeah. there was a moment where I thought I had screwed it all up trying to mess with the controller configuration. I'm like, I don't know how to fix it. Like, but eventually, like I was spending more time messing with it than I was playing with it at one point. So I get frustrated with this and I'm just like, yeah. cause I know my time is limited, but I did it. I finished it. It, it was a really good time. And it's just cool that I, that you're able to go back and do these things with some of the technology. So that's, that's something I've been playing. I've been playing Xenoblade Chronicles three on the switch. Um, I, I loved one and two. Um, I could talk about X for a second, but again, we ain't going to go down that rabbit trail right now <laughs> on the steam deck. <laughs> but uh, I've been playing three and it hasn't really got its hooks in me. I'm probably mm-hmm. think I'm like nine and a half hours in. It's weird. Okay. I'm nine and a half hours in and I'm still getting tutorial. I'm yeah. like, when is this going to end? Like, <laughs> I, I don't even feel like I can quit because I don't feel like I've got to where I, I first of all, I, you know, I, this the story, I have no idea what's going on in the story. I'm like looking for shortened plot synopsis of the chapters it's been mm-hmm. really bad. Like, again, I've been watching a bunch of Survivor with my wife during pregnancy. So I'm watching that. I'm playing video games. It's been a mess. Mm-hmm. But I'm nine and a half hours in. It's it's more Xenoblade. It seems really good. I don't know if I'm going to stick with it. And I hate to say that. Yeah. I'm going to, I don't plan on quitting yet. If you've seen the TRG auction house, it's up for sale. So someone could <laughs> buy it off me and I'd probably get rid of it. Yeah. Because, you know, we've said this for a long time. If you're not enjoying the game, you don't. Right. I don't feel like I have to just keep playing it if I can get yep. most of my money back. Mm-hmm. Yep. Again, I've got 10 hours out of it. So I could say, hey, for 15 bucks or whatever, I got 10 hours of game out of it. Fair enough. Yeah. But it just hasn't hooked me the way that I was hoping it would. I'm mm-hmm. going to give it more time to allow it to do that because I do love the world. I love just running through the big landscapes and seeing the animals and doing all the different fights. But I just haven't connected yet with the story. So we'll see yeah. how long I how long I go there. But lastly, real quick, the, the most recent game I started literally last night was uh, A Plague Tale Innocence. So I, I, I knew the new one, the second one was coming out soon. And mm-hmm. so I was just looking around. I'm like, again, because of the Steam Deck, I barely, like, I, I'm like, I have to turn on my PlayStation. <laughs> you know, I've got, <laughs> I've got to turn on my Xbox. I'm not going to let these nice consoles just sit here. He's got to blow the dust out of it. So I'm like... So I pull up, pull up the PlayStation. I'm like, what are some games I've got? I got the PlayStation Plus Essential, you know, set up for to like next year. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try Plague Tale Innocence. I've heard good good things. The graphics look great. So I started that. I'm like right at the beginning of it. And it seems like it's going to be good. I think the story is going to be intriguing. Uh, mm-hmm. I know Mike has played that and, and he enjoyed it. Yeah. So um, I'm going to play that. I probably, again, won't run right into the second one. Probably... If I like this one, give it some time to go on sale. The tension is, here's here's the tension. As a Steam Deck gamer now, I can't buy and sell games. And it kills oh, me. Oh, yeah. You mm-hmm. can't. Like, I'm always like, I would love to play these games on my Steam Deck. But I'm like, I'm not going to pay full price, especially if I can't sell it. So it's almost, it's like Indie Machine. It's older systems, if you get what I'm saying. It's like I tried the first game I bought on it. I'm getting ahead of myself, but the first thing I bought was Elden Ring because I'm like, this is the game I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my money's worth. And then I sold, yeah. I, I returned it in two hours because I'm like, this game ain't for me. Thank you, <laughs> Steam, for your return policy. But so I'm waiting for that that game that's gonna be like, this is the one I want to get specifically. It's probably gonna have to be maybe an exclusive or something, but. That's the biggest tension I have with these games is I would love to play them on the Steam Deck, but as the king of thrift, I have a hard time thrifting when it's digital. Mm-hmm. So, because everybody talks about Steam I Deck, I think about They're that. Right, yeah, you... But it ain't nothing. I'm like, I'm never going to be the guy that goes spends a hundred dollars on a Steam Deck sale or a Steam yeah. Deck a Steam yeah. summer sale. Yeah. So it's it's interesting for me. I'm not. Yeah, I'm getting, we're getting way ahead of ourselves, but I'm not the guy who's got a thousand Steam game in their library i'm kind of starting mm-hmm. from scratch right. so no that'll be a good perspective to kind of hear from especially since at least in my opinion you now i've i've been on pc for a little over a year now and even i'll admit like this the sales on there they're, they're okay but they're not 
they're not as bonkers as what they used to be, you know, getting games for like three, four bucks or something like that, or even cheaper. Unless it's uh, 10 years old. Right. Unless it's 10 years old. Yeah. Then, it, then it'll be dirt cheap, but that's a whole other thing that we'll, we'll surely uh, get into here shortly. But Micah, let's kick it over to you, man. What have, uh, what have you been playing, man? What you been getting into? Yeah, I was happy to hear that Adam was getting to a, into a Plague Tale. That is um, one of my very favorite recent games, and uh, the the sequel uh, Requiem comes out in October. That's one like I, I'm going to play that for sure, and I'm going to play God of War for sure. So I'm kind of almost mm-hmm. at that point you were talking about earlier, Adam. Where like I'm about to be kind of locked up for a couple of months, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I don't think a Plague Tale will take that long. But but anyway, I am playing. I'd rather talk about a Plague Tale than what I'm playing. I'm playing this. <laughs> Uh, 3d puzzle game <laughs> called maquette um this was a playstation plus game i think at least i have it I on, on the it. playstation plus library it's not bad i don't mean to make fun of it it's, it's really it's got some it's got some some good brain teasers um it's a it's a re- real head scratcher and it's real clever so you you it's about uh, manipulating the kind of the perspective of objects that you're holding and get, making them larger and smaller. And you have this kind of uh, diorama setup of the actual mm-hmm. level that you are walking around in, in the center of the stage that you can place objects into, and then it will affect the world that you're in around you. And it is quite clever in that regard. I'll, I'll hats off to that, but the execution, in my opinion, it's kind of rough. Uh, there's mm. some of the puzzles are, are pretty esoteric and really kind of like, what is, I, I'm, I was, I had to look a couple of things up and I'm even currently at a point where I'm so stumped that I think I broke the game and got ahead of a checkpoint somehow. And now I'm stuck oh. and can't go back. And I'm at, like, I'm locked in a room. And I'm like, this definitely isn't right. So I, I I'm really kind Have of, Have you been using the PlayStation stuck. cards? Not for that game. That's a good, d- d- does that game have them? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, that's a good thought. Uh, I didn't think about that. I, I seldom use the cards because not every game uh, has them uh, util- utilized. But uh, yeah, Maquette is pretty good. It's um, it's like I said, it's it's got some good puzzles and some good kind of ideas there. But the execution uh, it could be a little bit better. I'm, I'm not. What do you think about the yet. story so far? I thought the it's story okay. was engaging. I thought it was it's okay. Engaging. I'm I'm at least halfway through, maybe two thirds. Um, and it, it's fine. Yeah, it is kind of engaging. It's, it, it's not bad. It's nothing, you know, crazy or, or wild, but, um, it, it's good enough. And, um, you know, it's a short game. I think it takes maybe four five, six, seven hours at the most. That's not bad. And, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I've, I've not beat it cause I'm, cause I'm stuck right now. I need to go back in and try to like, go back to a checkpoint or something and figure out what the heck I did wrong. But, um, yeah, maquette is, is a, is a pretty good uh, puzzle game. You know, like I said, it's on, um, it's on PlayStation Plus is where I was playing it, so it was you know quote unquote free. But um, but yeah, it, mm-hmm. it's solid. Fair enough, man. I liked your use of the word esoteric, so I had to look that <laughs> up because I'm like I don't I don't even know if I know. I hope what I that used is. it right. But I looked <laughs> it up. The definition really says that definition is uh, it's supposed to like the it's intended for it's intended to be understood by a, a smaller group or a niche audience. And so I'm like, oh, that's, yeah, that's maybe fair. half right. I don't know. Even the anyway. definition is esoteric. No, I mean, right. <laughs> <laughs> double entendre there. <laughs> oh man. That's funny. Um, well, as far as what I've been playing, let me, let me catch y'all up with the uh, SD Gundam battle Alliance last episode. Uh, I was pretty high on it. I was like, Oh, this is cool. Now I'm 10 to 12 hours in. I'm like, Holy crap. This game is a grind fest. Like, to the point where it's kind of sullying my enjoyment of the game just because I don't really play Destiny 2 anymore because it's a it's a huge grind fest. That's just I want to feel like I'm making some kind of meaningful progress. And with Gundam Battle Alliance, it's just like you just come to a, a screeching halt. And it's I tweeted this out that like because of the grinding aspect of it and how you unlock parts and you have to go back and replay a bunch of missions to get parts for the Gundams to unlock more of them. Then you got to go grind currency to upgrade those things to the level that you're at so you can actually use them. I was like, this is like, this is just kind of hurting my enjoyment for it. And Mm. some rando on Twitter replied and like, well, it's better with friends and you got to go and replay these missions so you can get currency and then level up. I'm like, dude, I, I know how it, I know how it works. That's why I don't like it. So, yeah. I mean, it's cool to see like different 
scenes from all the series I've been watching recently and get to play those out. But uh, it's like it's like Adam says, man, ain't nobody got time for that. I ain't got no, I don't got time for these grind fests, man. It's ain't nobody got time. It's a yeah. bummer. It's a bummer, which is a shame because the game looks cool and it's easy enough to get into. But oof, I feel like I we're starting to get into, you know, we went through the Final Fantasy years mm-hmm. of podcast episodes. Uh, As a listener, <laughs> I'm like, we've gotten to the Gundam, the Gundam, years. Gundam stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. It's, it's just been funny. What either following on Twitter 100%. or listening on the podcast. It's like, yep. what Gundam story do we have this, this week? Yep. And yep. so it's been funny just as a listener. <laughs> we, uh, that, that different I've, level of aspect. I've brought another dark ages onto the show. Adam is what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hilarious. Oh my God. Uh, and you had to point it out are. so that we're all aware of it now. <laughs> yep. 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 Now people are going to go back and listen to it, but yeah, no, I remember that. I remember that like three or four months span where all I was doing was playing final fantasy. Dude, I think about. that's when I, I kid you not. I think that's around the time that I started listening to the show. Oh, it, yeah. roughly. It was a long time ago. It was like a, a real long time. Ago. Like, yeah. at that, least was five like years. that was like, that was like 2017, year one or two. Yeah, yeah, it was like year before one or two, then. I think. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. a while, but yeah. 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 Dark ages. Yeah. So anyway, I'll have to say I, I still want to finish it because I feel like I'm like literally on the, like the last chapter or like the chapter before the last one. So like I'm going to finish it out at least, but mm-hmm. uh, I don't I, I don't know if I'm going to go for the platinum on this one just because it's, it's way too grindy. But I will say, though, that one game that has broken up the monotony as brief as it was and was <laughs> an insane roller coaster of a game was Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, which is a game I've been meaning to play for years now. A longtime friend of the show, uh, Steven Gutierrez, has been recommending the game to me to play for the last several years. And I finally sat down, played it beat through it on easy took me like three and a half hours which surprised me i didn't realize it was gonna be that short but i will say that was the coolest three and a half hours of a video game (laughs) i have played in a long time because this so i mean i tweeted some of the some of the videos i don't i don't even know how to describe this game it's it's ridiculous it's insane it's frenetic it is violent it is it's pretty much on par with Metal Gear Solid, to be honest with you, but it's it's more fast paced because it's an action game made by Platinum Games and you're playing as Raiden and it's just it, so it's Kojima nuts. didn't have anything to do with this one. He well, I looked this up. Apparently they were working on the game in house and they worked on the story, but they couldn't get the gameplay just right. So that's when they put it out to Platinum Games uh, when it was in the middle of a hiatus. So they still had hands on the story. They just didn't really touch the gameplay that's all platinum games and Mm -hmm. it plays like a platinum games game it's buttery smooth and it's it's fast the combat's really good it's 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 oh it's good i'm I'm so glad to hear that logan especially the short length man that res me up even more to like yeah i even want to play it more now yeah like short games like bring them on um you know we talk about time and everything uh i was i was we were talking about this i can't remember if we were texting or who we were talking to about it but I had the itch to play this about a month or so ago too, just mm-hmm. randomly. It just, it's just one of those gaps in my backlog. I never yeah. really got to this one, never bought it or really cared to. I wasn't a big platinum fan, but I think I'm ready now. I think I'm ready to experience Metal Gear Rising mm-hmm. Revengeance. And this is the push I needed to go, to go seek it out and, and get me a copy. It's really it good, might man. be on PlayStation Plus, one of the. I'll have essential. to check and see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. It's like I said, it's really good. All mm-hmm. the boss battles. We're great. Like I, I there's really the only th- the only complaint I can levy against this game is I wish there was like a um, a dodge mechanic instead of that. You have like a parry system. So if an enemy is about to hit you, you press the attack button towards the enemy at the right time and you'll parry it and mm. it'll go into a, a quick time or a quick scene. Quick, quick time. Yeah, I think it's a quick time uh, sequence. But um, but other than that, like it, other than that, it, it's awesome. The ending is as goofy as you'd expect from a metal gear game it's yeah <laughs> it's so dumb that but it's awesome. so awesome <laughs> it's it's really good so if any of you have been curious about playing this game i highly recommend especially if you can beat the game in like three and a half hours on easy like it's it's kind of a no-brainer it's it's a good little power mm. palette cleanser i want to go back and unlock some more outfits because i have this one outfit where he's wearing a sombrero and a, and a poncho and i'm just like yeah, yeah let's yeah. do it 
<laughs> so yeah, Metal Gear Rising Revenge. I'm going to do a video for it for YouTube, and uh, it's so good. But with that being said, let's get into the topic of the show because we got to talk about some things that are really, really good. Because Adam over here is just like he's about to explode from from all of his pent up like hype and energy. Um, so you know, rate and review the podcast, so the show, do all that stuff. Adam, let's get into it, man. Let's talk about the truth mm. about Valve Steam Deck. We've seen the reviews. We've seen people talking about it on social media. But let's be honest. We don't trust games journalists. We trust we trust the handsome bearded man, dude. So l- l- kick it off, man. L- first of all, y- you you said that you, or at least on the show, like long-time listeners will know, like you haven't really been as interested in the PC gaming as like what maybe some other people in the community are. But with the Steam Deck, that changed things. So... Um, start there man what was it about the steam deck with that when you first saw it you were like i gotta get me one of these i gotta try it out you know we often laugh about me as adults we got all the all the you know as kids you had all the time but no money i'm not saying i've got all the money now but i've got enough money (laughs) where i can play the games that i want but the time's not Mm -hmm. there yeah and so um i love being cutting edge technology like psvr2 i'm like I'm going to really want to get that, but I should not buy it. Don't let me buy it. I'm not going to play it enough. I know it. I don't. But with this, I'm like, you know, I put in, I got in on the the queue to buy one. You know, it's kind of one of those things. I'm like, you know, I'm going to try to buy one. Mm-hmm. If I can get one, great. And it was a dumpster fire trying to get through checkout. I mean, it took me like an hour and then a half just trying to eventually get my $5 reservation. I made it into the Q2 to get it. And I'm like, you know, every Monday and then eventually Monday and Thursday, just hoping I was going to get my, hoping I was going to get my email. And you just had no idea when you were going to eventually get it. And so I remember when I got mine and it was like, I freaked out. I'm texting people. I texted our kids pastor. I'm like, I got the email. (laughs) I started freaking out. I'm like, and so I had hyped this thing up. You know, I was, I've got podcasts that I listen to now. I've got YouTube personalities that I follow that are that have I've watched any video. How do I get the most out of my Steam Deck? How do I because it's so foreign to me. I know nothing about Linux. I know nothing about Steam OS. I don't know what I get I know Steam. I think I had five games in my library. Uh it was Company of Heroes 2, uh Knights of the Old Republic, Quiplash, um, Fibbage. And those are like the the games on your phone, oh, like Jackbox okay, okay. games. Mm-hmm. And then oh, I had okay, okay, okay. Uh, I think I had Team Fortress. No, I had CS:GO. I think those are like the five Steam games I had in my library. So I'm like, again, starting basically, <laughs> yeah, from scratch. <laughs> and so I'm I'm trying to like learn and do all these things. So I get it, I open it up, and it's like. It took me a minute. I was almost sad. I had hyped this, you know, you hype, we always overhype things. So I had, I had hyped this thing up so high and I get it. And I'm like, I've got nothing to play. It's not like, oh, I, you know, that's why I said I went and bought Elden Ring. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get Elden Ring. This is going to be like my showcase game. I'm going to give it to my buddy and be like, hey, play Elden Ring on here. And then yeah. I get that and he's not any good at those games. I'm not any good at those games. So I'm like, <laughs> And at that point, you know, I didn't have those other ways that people play games that are from the past yet. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have any of the, like, the emulators and stuff set up. Uh, so I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, dang, like, I can't even, like, I'm not even enjoying this. So it took me, so that's kind of that PC gamer. It's like, okay, I had to learn a lot. So I've, right. again, I've been on Reddit a thousand times more than I had before. Like I'm not like in the Reddits looking up how to do these things, like yeah. terminal kernels. Like I have no, I still have no idea. I'm like, they could be hacking my system and I would have no idea because I mean, they're like, getting... put, the, put this command in here to do this thing. And I'm like, all right, here we go. Like <laughs> let's roll the dice. But I get yeah. all like the openness of the PC world. Like, the the open source of it the people just coming up with solutions it's it's yeah. been really cool getting into that i think probably the first month of having it maybe the first couple of weeks maybe month is i probably spent more time setting up things than actually playing 
like oh, wow. moving stuff around, troubleshooting, learning how to do this. I mean, the really cool thing about the Steam Deck is you've got, if you are a PC gamer, say you've had a PC your whole life, you've got a Steam library bit built up, the Steam Deck is going to be only more of a home run to you. You're going to open that thing up in the box. You're going to load up. You, you've got a 500 games uh, on your, like basically you just got to install them ready mm-hmm. to go. For me, I didn't have that. So I'm going into desktop mode again, trying to do some of the other things. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time in desktop mode setting up my system to get it. But now I'm at the point where I'm playing a lot more. I'm definitely, I'm not doing that. I'm only going into desktop mode if I need to, you know, adjust something in the back end because you've got your gaming mode with Steam OS. But it is cool. I mean, if you plug it into a dock, it is a PC. I plug okay. in a keyboard. I plug in a mouse. I plug it into my television. It's I could install pro- word processors. I could use it as a full fledged computer in desktop mode under cool. Linux. I mean, you can install Windows if you want to. I, I haven't yeah, okay. done that. I thought maybe originally when I um, bought it, I thought I would install Windows so I could mm-hmm. do it. Would be my Game Pass machine, but X Cloud is there. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation we'll get to maybe at some point. But yeah. I don't feel like I have to do that. And I don't really want to do that because Steam OS is smooth. And so it's been quite a shift. I'm used to putting the disc in because mm-hmm. I buy physical, installing the update, and I'm ready to rock and roll. I've had to learn a lot more on the back end, which has been fun. It's also been infuriating at times. <laughs> I mean, there, when I'm spending this much, I mean, it's. I bought the middle tier, so it was like five twenty nine. Mm-hmm. Then again, you know me; I'm king of thrifting. I'm wheeling and dealing. I didn't spend that much. Uh, <laughs> what was cool? So I bought like a couple of Xboxes on Facebook Marketplace for super cheap. Trade them into GameStop. You get GameStop credit for like I don't know. I make like a hundred dollars on the flip. But the cool thing, GameStop will let you get Steam cards. So I um... I took out all of my GameStop credit and steam uh, gift cards and basically okay. paid like 275 for my 550 dollars nice. system after tax because i had flipped three or four xboxes and made you know 50 dollars, 75 100 dollars in mm-hmm. those flips which kind of made up the difference so that was kind of cool yeah, getting yeah. to do it that way because i couldn't really justify it i don't right. need another system <laughs> yeah <laughs> i just i just don't As, like i said i'm forcing myself to turn on systems again very first world <laughs> problem i understand it mm-hmm. very first world but it has been a fun fun endeavor getting into the steam deck hearing you talk about it what i was thinking of you were talking about those people with an established steam library i want to go to that to that crowd yeah um when the switch was the first couple of years or really kind of really always you always hear people like a game would be announced like, oh man, perfect for the Switch. Perfect for the Switch. That kind of thing. Like a remaster of an old game that came out. Oh yeah, it's on the Switch now? Yes, I'll play it finally. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's people that have that Steam library are going to be like, oh man, I have these 30 games that are like, yes, this is perfect for Steam Deck. I, I, I've maybe played 10 of them before, but now, yeah, I'm going to go play this this 2D, you know, uh, turn-based thing that I wouldn't have necessarily played on the, the, the nice PC or whatever. Um, so yeah, I think that person is elated. Um, and the other thing that, that you were talking about that I, I kind of, I thought was cool is this whole concept of no, we'll call you when you got the email that Ooh. I don't know, maybe there's other things, other launches that have done it like that. But in this era of like everyone searching for a PS five and an Xbox series X and, and graphics cards and all this stuff, like by just trying the like rolling the dice on a website having this like just waiting for the call kind of thing like i know you had to go in initially to get the pre-order but kind of like again i can write when you're gonna get it adoption whether it's steam deck very different (laughs) things yeah but but it's been it's been fun it's been really fun to see all the reactions because you're right it's like okay I, i i secured it but when you know so that's been a really kind of a different kind of thing to see and it's been fun to witness everyone's kind of different reactions so that's cool how that all rolled out i thought yeah it's been i'm sorry i don't know if you i think it's starting to rain i might have a window but um yeah it was it was definitely wild seeing people get theirs and like the disappointment every monday when i didn't get the email like i'm like (laughs) maybe they haven't gone out yet so i'll search twitter like steam deck and you see everybody getting theirs, and you're just like, son of a gun, son of a gun. <laughs> like, dang it, Gabe. 
so it was it was it was quite the the season but when but once i got it it was like man it was i was pretty hype very cool Right on, man. Well, let's get into a little bit of our uh, listeners' write-ins. You know, as always, if you support us over on Patreon, you can get your write-ins included in the show. Questions, comments, fears, corrections, any of that stuff uh, for the episode. And we got one uh, from Alex Casalanos that says, Let's talk battery life. How long are you enjoying your amazing new Steam Deck before you're looking for a charger? I grew up with a Sega Game Gear and know what it's like to enjoy portable gaming within five foot of an outlet. LOL. Hey, that Game Gear is no doubt. I mean, the Game Gear was sweet, but he's right. You ate batteries if you use that thing. Yep. Um, that. The Steam Deck. If you're doing a long play session, you're gonna be you're gonna need to be be charging. Um, mm-hmm. Depending on the game, again, the one of the cool things about the Steam Deck is there's so much you can do in the back end. To person, you can literally personalize every game in your library. The settings for that game. So you can go in, you can look up again, Reddit, search best setting Steam Deck, uh, mm-hmm. Elden Ring. They're going to tell you the best stats, the best settings to put in that game to maximize graphics, to maximize your battery, to maximize resolution, all mm-hmm. of these things. And so if you want to compromise resolution or frame rate for a longer battery, you can adjust all of those things, which is, again, really cool. So I've... So you can turn on, like, if you look at any of the people talking, like, they've got, like, the overlay. It tells you your wattage. It tells you your frame rate. It tells yeah, you yeah. Again, all these nerd things that I don't know what any of them mean. But I, you know, <laughs> I'm looking at them like, wow, like, that number dropped. I don't know what it means. But <laughs> so yeah, you can really good. play. You can really play with that. So with some of the, like, emulation and stuff like that, especially for the older systems, I mean, you can get a long battery life out of those. You're probably getting four, five, six hours, depending on the game, because it's not drawing a lot of power. Mm -hmm. But if I'm playing Elden Ring, uh, you're probably getting two and a half to three hours at most on a high powerful game. Uh, Now, someone for me, I'm not playing two to three hours. So it's not been a, a huge effect to me personally, because it's just, I'm, I'm just not in that window where I'm really sitting there having that game in session. The biggest thing is if I forget to charge it, then I might yeah. be like, dang, like how is I'm the out heat? Of battery, but like, like on the back of it or anything, is it does it get hot? Yeah, I mean, it, it gets warm. It gets warm. Uh, again, there's been some times where I've I've been emulating some maybe some newer stuff just again just see if I could do it, and that has got this thing. The fan is blowing out mm. heat. Like it, it gets so it it's not optimal for some of those things. So you can feel it chugging. To, to accomplish some of the things that you're trying to get to do. So, and in that case, I'm getting maybe two hours. I mean, mm-hmm. you're, you're using a lot. So it all is game dependent yeah, on yeah. how much battery. It's not like if I'm playing my switch, I'm basically getting the same general battery life. Cause none of the games are really overclocking it or uh, you're getting almost what you're getting. Mm-hmm. But on this, it is very much game dependent. But again, for me, it's not been a big deal because I'm playing, you know, an hour and a half, two hours would probably be the absolute most I've ever played in one sitting with right. it. And so, and depending on what that is, it's like, I've still got, you know, an hour, hour and a half left, 30% of yeah. my battery. And so I could adjust it. If I knew my battery was getting lower, I can go in and I can elongate that even more. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Again, the, the customization of this thing it's just nuts. I mean, you look up something like Linus Tech Tools again. I never really followed Linus. Linus mm-hmm. is a big PC guy. I watch mm-hmm. Linus videos now because he's like, he's done all kinds <laughs> of crazy things to his Steam Deck Let's go. because that's what he does. But it's just, there is so much customization that you can do to this device. It is, it's a PC. If you think, yeah. oh, I can do that on a PC, you can likely do it on the Steam Deck. Now, This is kind of a different, this is kind of getting off the battery life we were talking about. uh, I wanted to talk about this a second ago in regards to the game library. The whole made for deck, not every game can play on the Steam Deck. And so you may have a bunch of games in your library that aren't, they don't work on the Steam Deck or they're not Mm -hmm. optimized or they're in this testing phase. Or as the games are updating and systems updating, I was probably... (sighs) 
I don't even want to talk about it. I don't know, probably 13, 14 hours into Knights of the Old Republic 2. And an update happened. I don't know if it was to the game or to my Steam Deck, and it made the game unplayable. So I'm like, mm. hmm. until they address it, and it, what happened was it made the controller, it didn't recognize the Steam Deck controller because most games are viewing it almost like it would an Xbox controller. But something with the infrastructure and mouse and keyboard and all these things, I couldn't get it to recognize my keyboard anymore or my, my gamepad anymore. So mm. at some point, I'm sure it will get updated. You know, I looked it up and sure enough, other people were reporting, hey, this isn't working on the Steam Deck anymore. And I'm like, all right, I don't have the capacity to fix this. I'm just going to have to wait for an update. Yeah. So there, there's some of those things with it where – it's still new. It's a new system. It's a new category. They're learning a lot about it still. And that's kind of been the one hard thing. Like the really, the only time when I'm like, okay, this is a bummer. Cause again, I was probably going to finish just to finish it. I don't probably, I didn't probably enjoy it as much as the first Knights of the Old Republic, but I wanted to see it through. Right. And it just made it, it just made it me unable to do that. Uh, I could go into desktop mode and I could plug in a keyboard and mouse if I wanted, but I'm like, if anything, it honestly gave me permission to move on to another game, yeah. uh, which was fine because I, I like to finish games. But that's been one of the weird moments so far that's like, OK, this is because the game said on Steam's page, it wasn't Steam Deck verified, but it worked. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it was like in this pending phase. And when it went to that, it, it actually screwed it up more. So you kind of you're kind of just learning a lot with it. But games that are made for it, I mean, it's. It's cool getting to play some of these really big first party games that look really nice on the go. Like one of the first ones I did was um Prey, the game by uh EA made it. Um it's like a kind of a spiritual successor to Bioshock. You remember that game? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I'm by I, I never, Yes, yes. Okay. So I never played it because they, they said it was a little bit more stealth and I'm like, I don't wanna yeah, So that yeah. was a game I installed because I'm like, I wanna see a first person shooter game, what it looks like on here. Mm -hmm. And it, I was blown away <laughs> at how good, how good that game looked and how yeah. good it felt to play it on the go. Like again, we've played first person shooters on the switch. It's grainy. It, mm -hmm. it, it's not smooth. This was a high quality experience on the go. And it, huh. it blows your mind when, when you have those moments. That's pretty wild. Let me, kind of go back to something you were talking about a second ago with like games that are verified for deck games that aren't and things like that because i mean obviously i don't have a steam deck that's why we brought you so i'm gonna pick your brain here um i i can't wrap my head around kind of what that looks like or how it works because i would think that if you're opening your steam deck and you're logging into your library you know all of your games should play on it but that's that's not the case so i guess like if a game is not verified for the steam deck can you even play it does it run really poorly like, no, like what does question. that look like yeah so even if it's not verified you can likely open it up they're just okay. saying we've not tested this there's like a, a parameters for making a game verified it's got to have readable text on the small screen it's got to have oh, all okay. of these different like parameters to make it steam Deck okay. verified so yeah. it's not like i've got the witcher 2 i've been wanting to play the witcher 2 uh since i played the witcher 3 i bought it for mm -hmm. like two dollars and 80 cents that's one of those 10 year old games that we were talking yeah. about yeah i bought yeah. it for two dollars or something and i booted it up and it looked like i was on windows 95 like it had like mm -hmm. the little gray window and so it's not steam deck verified but it is playable it recognizes my controller i can okay. play it i'm sure there's going to be wonky things at some point that i might need to figure out uh, i may it may break right. it some the game may break at some point so you can mm -hmm. usually play them like arkham asylum uh arkham city i think those are steam deck games that aren't verified but usually okay. what i'll do is i'll just type in is this game playable on the steam deck and then someone's got a video verifying hey you can play this game on okay. the steam deck some of the biggest ones that you can't fall guys can't play fall guys because oh. of uh, like the anti cheat stuff. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. I think Fortnite natively, you can't play on it. You have to do like uh, X Cloud. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Rumbleverse is another. I think Rumbleverse actually you might be able to. Um, multiverse, maybe you can't. So some of those that are like high competitive, um, a lot of them right. aren't verified because of the way that Steam has the anti-cheat okay. stuff. But what's cool is, so you got the Steam library, but one of the libraries, you know, I was talking about libraries. I do have a decent uh, Epic Game Store library because they do free games all the time. So yeah. I, I've been for like a year, probably six to seven months, maybe even before that, maybe a year before I got my Steam Deck, I had started like PlayStation Plus just going in and getting the free games because I'm like at right. some point I'm going to get a PC or I might want to get a PC. So right. I, I've got a good amount of games in there. Now you kind of got to jump again. You have to figure out some things. You have to download some program that allows you to run the Epic Store launcher on your system, install mm-hmm. games. It's not it's not clean and crisp like Steam. If it's in Steam, right. it looks great. You just got to play with it a little bit. But once you get the game running, it's like you don't know any difference. You just have to you just have to play with it a right. little bit. So I've got a decent like Epic Game Store library, a, a couple games like from Amazon Prime Gaming for like GOG. So I've got like um, Ghost Runner on there. I've got Control. I've got all of the to- the new Tomb Raiders, Prey, Loop Hero. Like I've got a good amount of games uh, on those two libraries that supplements the, the Steam library. But it, you're even finding even some of those. Those may not, those are probably more likely kind of what you're talking about. They're not okay. going to work because you're already going through another system right. to get it to work. So you find some more issues with that that you might have to work through compared to just a Steam Steam game. Okay. So I guess I'm listening to this. I'm kind of thinking of the folks who like really don't want to get into PC gaming because of like all the hoops they have to jump through. And and I think, and I could be misremembering, but I think like that was kind of one of your reasons for not getting into PC gaming. How is that? change since you've gotten a steam deck are you kind of more okay with troubleshooting things or is that like something that you wish you could change about the steam deck i mean your boy's pcmr if you know what i'm saying it's like okay okay uh, here we go here we go i am not that i still love the convenience of the console game i mean if i could just get game pass natively I would be set. I would never mm-hmm. buy a Steam game. I would never. I mean, that is the goal. When <laughs> I'm, I think it's a matter of when, not yeah, if. I think, I think it's, it's it is gonna happen at some point. They're gonna figure out something. Give me PC Game Pass on the Steam Deck because right now I'm just doing X Cloud, and it okay. honestly, I'm shocked at how good it works. It's again, it's walking. Oh. I had to download Edge browser. Do all of these again? These kernel oh, no. control things, and I'm Adam, like, no. But that's how that's how you had to get XCloud to work. <laughs> you had to use you, Edge browser to get XCloud to work on your. It was that's all wild. these random things again, just playing yeah. around with it to get to work. But it works, and it works well if you've got a good internet connection. Same thing with uh, remote play uh, on the PlayStation Five. Out jaw to the ground. The first time I did remote play on my Steam Deck to my PlayStation, huh. I could not believe how good it worked. And it felt like I was having, I had a portable PlayStation. Wow. The internet was good. There wasn't a lot of lag. I'm like, this is insane. Like I've done it on my phone. You know, I've done remote play with the Kishi Razor and it's cool. But when you've got a big screen, that controller on something that you know could like play this, it just, so I can imagine playing Spider-Man, some of those God of War that are now right. PlayStation on PC. I haven't bought one of those because it's hard for me to go back to pay full price for a game I've yeah. already beat and I've got it on my PlayStation. Right. But those games, if I yeah. got a copy of that, it would. I can only imagine how much it would blow my mind to be playing <laughs> these native games. But it's definitely made me, to go back to your question, it's definitely opened me up to more of that. Again, okay. I can get I get frustrated at times because I'm just like, my biggest thing is I don't want to screw up my nice device, right? And I don't yeah. know enough that I'm afraid I'm always going to do that. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like again, like I said, when I was playing Metroid, 
I had messed up the controller and I was like, oh no, I don't know if I can fix this. Mm. So I'm like, am I going to have to wipe my system to reinstall the packages and to do all this stuff? The fear in me is I don't know how to fix things. I'm not that guy. Mm -hmm. But so far, I've been able to figure out most of the things. Um, and let me see if I can pull this up for you, Logan, because you'll get a kick out of this. So I've got I'm, for the if you're just listening, I'm pulling up my Steam Deck. There is a there's a game here that I told Logan that he needs to buy um, for a long time uh, on his PC and play it. But he, he had some issues and uh, I had some issues. Yeah. And so, but it was a hard one for me. I could not get it to work. I couldn't get it to figure out. Mm -hmm. And it's not one to launch because and I, another weird thing, if you don't have your Steam Deck in like offline mode, it can make games kind of challenging to uh, to launch. Let's see if I can get this to, to run. So like if you have it in offline mode or you have it like not in offline mode, that can mess with certain games opening yeah it's it's really uh why isn't this working yeah it's because it's looking for online so you it's like oh i need to go in and shut it in the offline okay mode. usually it'll launch quicker and faster if not it's kind of like searching for a connection and it'll again, start some buffering of the things like, and okay okay that i mean I've, i think we've all dealt with that before on consoles i think xbox I think I ran into that a few times on Xbox with like Destiny or Halo or something like that. You had to put it in offline mode and then it would actually boot quicker and then you could turn the online on or something like that. Or maybe that was with installing the games. I, I can't remember which one it was. Like a great but. example of this, of the issues. Like I haven't, I haven't been on my Steam Deck because I've been playing some, forcing myself to play <laughs> other things. <laughs> uh, but because of that, like I'm sure there's been an update and so basically what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to launch Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. It's a PC game. <laughs> but you, I had to go in and do all of the... Okay, now it's one to work because I turned it into offline mode. But I had yeah, to do I, some like weird... I remember downloading okay. that game and trying to play it. I'm like, I can't, I can't get any of these controls to work for me at all. I'm just like, going to set that down. I bet it'll open up at some point. But... So I got that one fun. Like that was my last unicorn. I'm like, mm -hmm. why can't I get this to work? And it took me forever. I did so many different things trying to troubleshoot. And it's just kind of known as, especially in the world of emulation, a really hard game to emulate um, yeah. because of the, just some of the software is just super weird. But yeah. I eventually got it and I'm like, okay, now I can stop finagling with this steam deck <laughs> i've kind of got those games that i want to play the old school classic some of those mm -hmm. but um i'm trying to get to load but i don't even know what's going on but yeah so it's it's been a lot of fun just again learning that so if you're not a pc pc person i think there was some memes that you and other people had shared of like pcmr but like Steam Deck the owners who like think they're PCMR, like that's me. Oh, I, yeah. I'm not really that <laughs> PC gamer, but I feel like I am because I own a Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the, I mean, I don't know if you want to ask some more questions, but just the general feel of the device, I mean, it is, it feels like a high quality machine. Like it doesn't feel cheap. The buttons, mm -hmm. the controller feels really good in your hand the uh like the trigger button i don't know what they're called like the paddles like you can mm -hmm. map those to any button again and you can you can change the controls for literally every game i could have a different controller setting for every game and it saves them so it's again i know you can do that in other games but it's built so like nice. into the it's built into the os like yeah. i don't in most games yet you you're depending on does it have key binding changes? Can I, mm -hmm. does, will the game allow me to do that? This allows you to do that with basically every game. So it's super cool to be able to do that. Um, yeah, Bluetooth, all of that. I had some issues with some controllers. Try, I was mm -hmm. trying to set up a bunch of controllers. And again, I don't think it was a Steam Deck. I think it was me. I was just struggling to get controllers to connect bluetooth mm -hmm. they weren't updated it was all of these different things mm -hmm. again some of it's the newness of the steam deck 
the operating right. system is still getting caught up. But I've had a, a few issues there, so I'm not I've not used it really as a multiplayer machine yet. I could, okay, but because it's again, it's a PC. It's but it's mainly been single player. Most of my gaming is single player at this point. But the software looks great. Steam OS is again once you get it set up, it is sharp. It feels like you've got a switch. You kind of can click through all of your different games. You can do your different media stuff. It's and again the personalization. You can go in here and do all kinds of stuff to the hardware to to maximize your settings. So um, I haven't done much. If anybody wants to add me on Steam Deck or on Steam, I have like literally two friends on Steam because I never, <laughs> I was never a PC gamer. I mean, Logan would know it. It's I've got Chris from Apple and I've got uh, Jeff from Apple. Those are my only two friends on Steam because apparently at some point when I at some point when I worked That's for uh, Apple, I I opened up my Steam library for something. Who knows what? We probably played yeah, CS:GO. I, I think is what we did. So I have two That's friends funny. on Steam. I've never used it for chat. I've never done any of those things. So I, so I can't speak into that. But yeah. it is, it is. I mean, again, it's it is my preference of place to play. It's my mm-hmm. favorite place to play. But it comes down to, again, there's still a lot of other factors that go into it. Some of it is money, the the mm-hmm. ability to resell. That will always be a hiccup for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will never get the most out of my Steam Deck because I will not buy a new game for full price yeah. unless it is a game I know. Like if God of War, honestly, if God of War came day and date to PC, I might buy it on the Steam Deck mm. so I can play it on the go, so I can do mm. that. But mm. because I know it won't come for probably six months, a year, two years later, and I can play it now on 4K on my TV, that's always going to be a tension. So it's it's yeah. almost killed my Switch. Switch is now a wow. Nintendo exclusive machine. I don't go, you wow. know, for a while, the, the Switch was where you would go to play indies. I, I yeah. play indies on the Steam Deck now. That is where, yeah. that's where I go for those things. So um, it's always, it's not, oh, is that coming out for the Switch? It's, oh, it's probably on PC so I can get it on the Steam Deck. And for indies like that, they do go on sale relatively quick. So you're, I'm getting them for just as good of a price. So my other systems, to some degree, it's not as strong. Game Pass is still amazing. I still go on Game Pass and I just play random games because I'm like, this is nuts. Like Game yeah. Pass is still an amazing value. PlayStation Plus Essential, still an amazing value. I mean, that is, I haven't got to talk on it because it's happened since, but that, that is an amazing library. Is it Game Pass? Not necessarily, Mm -hmm. but it is really, really good if you've not played some of the bangers that are on that list. I've played Mm -hmm. a lot of them, so I don't have to, like the Spider-Mans, Returnal, Ghost of Tsushima, all those. But if you've not played those, it is a must get as a Mm -hmm. PlayStation fan if you get a system. It is. It's unbelievable. So those things are still keeping me on those systems, in those ecosystems. But the Steam Deck is, again, I am... I am, I believe, I am, I am in on it. I am down with what it, the freedom that it allows you to do. If, if there's a way people on the internet are figuring out ways to do things that I would have never thought that I could figure out and they give you great tutorials, the community, again, I'm not like in discords and stuff like that. I mean, if right. you're in TRG discord, you know that like I pop my head in every once in a while and I get nervous. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on. And I leave. <laughs> but the community, it seems like there's a such a crazy PC community that wants to help people figure out things that you yeah, can yeah. find the answer. So it is it has really been uh, a really cool uh, a really cool device to have. And I I bought me uh, the docs like the the Steam Dock hasn't come out yet. So I just bought a like a hub. I plugged mm-hmm. that USB C hub in oh, a couple okay. PC a couple USB three, you know, a keyboard, a mouse, wireless mouse. Uh, I can plug in an HDMI cord to my TV and I can just, I can be up and running on there. I think I played some Metroid Prime on my TV with a controller because I could. So jealous. (laughs) It's like, I think I sent you guys a video of that. Yeah, you did. did. Because I'm just like, 
that was the only time I did it because I don't like have a convenient. It's not as convenient as the switch. Yeah. You just drop it in and it works. I have to do some different things, but mm-hmm. it is. You did it just if so I you had can like a legit setup with yeah, a. That's really why you did it. <laughs> was what? He said that he said the only reason you did it was just to make me jealous. I'm like, yeah, that, that's that's probably it. You know, <laughs> I want Logan to know. Hey, again, he's living vicarious. He wants his boy to play yeah. Metro Prime. I've never played. I do. I really. I do. want him to know yeah. that I'm playing it. But there is a little bit of like, hey, look at what I'm doing, and hey, <laughs> it's like, how cool is this? <laughs> Logan, you can do it if you wanted to. I'm just saying. I mean, you hey, Nintendo. You don't have to wait. Nintendo, Nintendo, uh, Nintendo's pushing me. Uh, what's that? What's They're that? Backing uh, you in the corner, man. They're backing what's you. What's that in the DMX corner. song? Y'all gonna make me act a fool up in here? Yeah, I'm just that's, saying. That's where they're gonna get me. That's I'm how they're getting me. Just saying. You that's own the games. It's but anyway, one thing I do want to get to because you kind of talk about like the newness of the Steam Deck and how you know there's there's some hiccups here and there and arguably or not arguably but there's been some some of these things that we've touched on here in this next question i'm about to read from john hannon uh who writes it and says valve is all but outright said another generation of steam deck is in development it's really just a question of when it'll release and what the specs mm-hmm. will be does this change how you feel about purchasing the first generation hardware would a bump in specs be worth an upgrade or does the current hardware do everything you need it to so i mean kind of what do you think of that and really i, I don't I haven't looked too closely into it, so I'm not sure what they are trying to Mm -hmm. uh, do as far as the hardware upgrades. But I mean, what do you think, man? Does this, I mean, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're still trying to get everybody's steam decks out. I mean, they're still backed up till like Q3 of this year, whatever that is. I mean, they're, they're still in probably December, January before everybody's going to get theirs. So Mm -hmm. I don't think it's anytime soon. You're probably looking at, probably minimum two years out i would yeah. guess i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe because it is a pc and graphic cards and all that do get upgraded maybe more quickly than a console generation maybe it will be a quicker turnaround but i don't i wouldn't let it hold me back if you were able to get one i don't know anyone who's got a steam deck and is like man i wish i would have waited till gen 2 like you're in it and you're like this thing is 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 amazing it's blowing my mind how good it is sure Mm -hmm. the temptation will want to be to get the next one the new one and if i can do that affordably i probably would Mm -hmm. but i've never been the graphics guy you know i'm not the guy who's saying uh i need you know 1440p monitors 120 refresh rate all those little things are probably gonna be like you know the things that would matter okay give me a little bit better battery but like i said that's not really yeah. affecting me a ton because I don't get a long, a super long play session. So for how yeah. I play, for what I need, it's really giving me everything that I would need it to, to do. And so I don't have many complaints on that end. Again, technology, as soon as it comes out, it's already almost old. That's just kind of where we're at today yeah. and age. It doesn't take long for anything to be out of date. Yeah. Um, because things are just always pushed the envelope. That's really cool. But so we're probably, I would get, I don't know if there was another steam bag, 2024 would be the earliest yeah. that we would see another iteration of the steam deck. I would guess maybe even I'd be shocked if they announced it next year, but maybe, I don't know. I'm not PC world is, is new to me. Maybe because of, like I said, the components issue, it could be faster, but even if I got it for two, if I had it for two and a half years and they refresh it, I got a feeling I'm going to be, I'm not going to be kicking myself saying, oh, no, I'm going to be saying, man, I had such a great time. What do I got to do yeah. to get my hands on the next version? So yeah. it kind of, as you were sitting there talking about it, it kind of reminds me of the time, you know, when we worked at Apple and people would come in, you know, roughly around the time when like a new phone or iPad released. And they'd be like, you know, well, should I wait till the next one? Should I get one now? And it's like, I mean, that, that's really it. Technology it doesn't matter when you buy it. It's going to be outdated the moment you you open it and get it out of the box and all that. It's like I was even going through uh, the history of robotics with my students and just in the course of like, what is it? It's 18, 20 to 20. Like it's just in the course of 200 years, we go from a giant brass machine that's doing 
uh, trigonometry. And then 200 years later, we've got bipedal robots that can do commands, lift things and open doors and do all that. It's like technology moves at such a fast rate that like there's really no right time, so to speak. It seems like to jump in on technology. Um, and especially with the, with the Steam Deck, it sounds like, you know, it's got a it's got a very vibrant community around it that is doing different things and it seems like learning new things that you can do with it almost every week that it's like, who knows if, 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 who knows if, if we've really tapped into everything that this thing can do at the moment, you know? So it just, and that is the, that is the, you make a really good point there. Even as the technology, the longer it lingers, the more people are going to figure out how to get more out of it. It's like, yeah. why was the last of us, part two, kind of the big thing on the PlayStation 4. They had seven years of of getting the most every ounce out of the PlayStation 4 that they could get out of it. So people are only going to do that more mm-hmm. with the Steam Deck until the next one. So they're going to make adjustments. They're going to figure out, again, all the customization that you can do with it. it they're gonna, It's going to be a very viable machine. It's just yeah. a matter of, do you feel like you got to have the latest, greatest? I didn't even get the nicest model. I got the middle model. I didn't get the one with the anti-glare. Uh, you oh. know, you look at the hard drive. It comes with a 256 gig hard drive. All you got to do okay. is get an SD card. I, I think I paid 30, 40 bucks for a 400 gig SD card. And that That's speed is just as good as the internal one. So it's like with the Switch. You know, you can get as big as you want. So mm-hmm. all those things go into it. There are always going to be adjustments that you can make, but it seems like there are a lot of solutions to them right now. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, let's get into uh, John's last question that he says here. And I think you might have already answered this, but we'll just kind of hop back into it and just see. Um, he asked if you could change one technical detail about the Steam Deck, what would it be? I know you mentioned the battery life, but is there is there anything else? I mean, battery life would be cool. Honestly, I mean, I don't know if this is, if it's, technical i mean the the biggest thing that uh, maybe it's my biggest dream like if i can have one thing about the steam deck and i've already kind of said it it would be pc game pass native Uh, pc game pass native on the steam deck that is the biggest personally for me because my steam library is not so big if that was the magical you get one steam deck wish like that that is the biggest goal i mean yeah. All of at some point I maybe will will get put windows on it, but it seems like that's more of a nightmare than anything right now. But mm-hmm. the value is so much there that I would have I've at least considered it because again, then I don't really ever have to buy it's like Xbox. I don't ever really have to buy another Xbox game. Any game yeah. that I want to I'm really gonna want to play is most likely gonna be first party Xbox, Microsoft. And so if I had that on Steam Deck, I would be golden. So that's really the biggest one is, and mm-hmm. I can only believe that with how Microsoft is approaching their model, they want it everywhere. You can do yes. it with xCloud. Yeah. I can only imagine they're trying to do anything they can right now. They've got the devs on it. How do we get native uh, Game Pass on Linux, whatever you want to call it, uh, Steam yeah. OS? How do we make that native? Because that is going to be the killer app whenever it happens Mm -hmm. i mean it will maybe i don't know if it again microsoft doesn't seem to care i don't know would that hurt the series s system sales i don't know but it would it would lock me into game pass forever if that whenever that happens yeah, I think I think that's kind of their ultimate goal, though, is just to get as many people as they can on there. It doesn't really matter where you play at, and so uh, I think you're I think you're right, man. I think they're definitely working on that and trying to figure out, you know, how can we get this on there because because that's just a whole other uh, consumer base that, that that they could get into um, and just kind of go from there. But Mike and man, do you have any any other questions uh, for for Adam? No, he really covered um, pretty much all of it that I kind of was curious about. But yeah, it's a um, super impressive machine. Uh, you know, they're really th- taking off as far as like being like, oh, we need to produce more and more of these. Um, so it's really seems to be taking off and kind of filling a void 
as the switch kind of ends its life cycle here that uh, kind of picking up the, the baton, at least until the next uh, Nintendo uh, console comes out. So, yeah. I mean, if you, if someone likes retro games, this is a system for you. There is no doubt about it. I mean, unless you, again, if you're just 100% against emulators, I guess it's not for you. But if you're okay <laughs> with that, it is, it, again, I don't want to, again, some people are uncomfortable. Some people probably won't mm-hmm. like that I do that. Um, but if it is amazing what you can do with old systems and the games in that c- category. So just even like to some levels, I don't know if you want to call it game preservation or accessibility. Mm-hmm. It has blown the doors open on some of these, some games that I would never get the opportunity potentially to play. I will get that opportunity to do that because of this, which is really cool. Um, but it is, I mean, Micah, you kind of mentioned it. I was hype about it, but I didn't know, am I really going to love this thing? You know, I almost mm-hmm. was like, you know me, I'm buy, I buy and flip. Am I going to buy this yeah. thing and just flip it and make some money and maybe wait till all the, the kinks are worked out. But I'm glad I've kept it, man. I, I am impressed. Again, I'm out here talking about it. You can hear my, imp- like how yeah. impressed I am. I am shocked even still at how amazing this little device is, what they've been able to do with it. It's the Switch Pro uh, without first-party Nintendo games. It is it is <laughs> video games on the go, and it works. It just works, and it works well. And it, it is mind-blowing what Steam has been, or Valve has been able to uh, do with this device. And so I know other others in the group, I think Isaac... Um, I don't remember Isaac's last name. Is it Schultz, Stultz, something like that? Um, oh, I don't know. He's one of the I other just know him as Sojourner. Uh, he's got one. I know, I think, um, my mind's blinking, but there's a, Sammy's got one. I think he just got yeah. his recently. So mm-hmm. there's a handful of guys in the community that have got them. And I, I, I would even love to hear their opinions. I mean, I, do they like sure. it as much as I've liked it? Because uh, it's been... It's been kind of mind-boggling. And I, you know, I watch videos on all the different competitors that are coming out, and it seems like the price point is nuts. Like any of like the AO, Neo, the the other portable PCs, those are like a thousand dollars. The fact oh, that wow. I got this thing for five fifty after tax, right. that alone is kind of mind-boggling to me. How oh. compared to the others in the market, its price is kind of it's, it's impressive. Yeah, hmm. we'll have to look some of those up. I didn't know they were they were doing other uh, like other companies were doing other models, but man, yeah. Again, uh, look up Lin, Lin, uh, Linus. He's he's always comparing them. He's okay, one of the guys uh, Gardner Bryant. I'm trying to think of somebody like the Fox is another guy. P H A. Okay. Right on. We'll, we'll definitely do that. But as always, dear listeners. Now it's your turn. If you have a Steam Deck or you have an interest in one, maybe you got a question or something, let's let's hear it all the ways that you can connect with us here at TRG. If you want to connect with Adam specifically, though, uh, don't go to Discord. Go to the Facebook group because <laughs> that's where you will. Or Twitter. Like I'm on. I'm on Facebook. Or I'm Twitter. an old man. I'm you know I'm getting there. <laughs> I've, I'm balding. I've got gray in the beard. Discord <laughs> is too much. It's overwhelming. Instagram, not a chance. Snapchat, nope. TikTok. <laughs> no you can find me on the old people markets of facebook <laughs> and twitter that is where i interact because ain't nobody got time for all if i'm gonna game i can't be on the the socials constantly i'm on them too much so if you want to interact again I'm, I'm active in those pretty well so you know we like to like and share gifts and give each other a hard time on twitter specifically but exactly exactly well dear listeners again thank you for listening to this episode of the reform gamers but before we let you go a couple things that we've got to do since this is the second episode of the month it's our patron thank you episode and so beforehand you know i didn't do this last time and then david subsequently roasted us on twitter so thank you for that david and just kind of calling us (laughs) out it's always fun when you do that on twitter updated the patron list here just to make sure i didn't miss anybody checked it not once not twice three (laughs) times just to make just to triple make sure because i don't want to get called out on twitter again so i am curious adam it's been a while since you've been on the show man do you want to read 
Some well, of the I'm patrons. Looking, I'm looking at some of the names, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to fight reading some of these last names, <laughs> uh, especially in the blue. The blue's got some names on there. I'm like, right? I don't know if I'm a. I, I would read the red, but I don't think I would pass on the blue. Tell you what, Micah, let's make it hard for you. You can you can take the blue, Adam. You can take the red. Y'all can go ahead and thank these dear patrons who allowed TRG to continue doing what we do here at the show for the month of September. Thank you so much, patrons. Yes, Aaron L. White, Alex Castellanos, Boulder, Boulder, Brandon Buonacorsi, Chris Freeman, Christopher Commander, David Henderson, David Matthews, Derek Smith, Jake Walker, Jeff Jackson Jr., Jimmy Changa, John Hannon, Jonathan Harrison, Josh Broccolo, Clay Brandon, Kokora Daki, Luke Strain, Matt Edwards. Matthew White, uh, Chocolate McDougal, Matt Millsap. Melvin Benson, the fifth, Micah Hendrick, what? Michael mm-hmm. Toller, Mr. Butts. Some of these guys, you just, <laughs> they've been doing it forever. It's, it's they're the best. Yep. Nate McKeever, <laughs> Retro Rewind Podcast, Richard Merrill Keen, Ryan 1701E, Sam White, Savan Pena, Sojourner, uh, Tim Syriac, Travis Vincent, you, Wesley Ray, um, uh, Yuki Alley and Zachary Nelson. Again, it's cool. Again, I used to read these. It's cool seeing so many new names. So yeah, mm-hmm. again, I, we shared about it on the pre-show. I still feel like a we, even though yeah, man. I'm not on it. So it it's is true. Again, even as a listener, appreciate the patrons still doing what yeah, they do. Man. Yeah. Well, hey, man, it's like it's like Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. You know, once you get into TRG, <laughs> you never stop. It's always a we here at TRG. Oh my gosh, that that rhymed. It's always a we at TRG. Oh, dude, man. It's what was t-shirt. that one that we had last episode? It was like, words are hard, but TRG goes harder or something like that? Mm. Yeah, something like that. All, all new ideas. That's, that's like anyway. biblical. There's always a we at TRG. That's, oh, like, that's like, that's biblical. Yeah. I, I like it that. a lot. I like it a lot. Then you incorporate the Wii logo. Sorry, I'm getting ideas now. I'm going to have to go sketch these out. <laughs> but before we let you go to your listeners, again, some recos, some things that you should go check out this week. Obviously, you should go check out a Steam Deck and go, let me see if it's right for you. You know, I'm definitely going to go look at one. You ain't getting one anytime soon, but you can get I'm a say, relation in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, actually, yeah, I could probably do that. And then that'll arrive just in time for Father's Day because <laughs> I'll be a dad, Lord willing in the next year but adam man what, what are what are some other things that our dear listeners sh- should check out besides besides the steam deck you know i was joking with the associate pastors or the other pastors at our church unfortunately being a cowboys fan i want to skip oh. over football season can we yeah. just can't, yeah. like i was wearing a basketball jersey and i'm like they were trying to give me a hotel i'm like guys <laughs> it's basketball season i've skipped over it but it's yeah. fancy football season so even if the cowboys stink i still got some fun there so I might have recorded them in the past, but the Fantasy Footballers, it's a great podcast. It's clean. It's hilarious. They give great insight to fantasy football if you're if you're down with that. Um, check them out. And then shout out. I mentioned them in the pre-show, getting to hang out with Brother Javier Medina and uh, Dorian, some of the guys down in Orlando earlier this year, kind of a low-key low uh, TRG meetup. But when I went to their church, super cool. They gave me like three books in their welcome bag. I'm like, as the nice. guy who's in charge of a welcome bag at my church, there's blue R's out of the water. We give a coffee <laughs> cup. They give me three books. But one of them was one of them was The Soul Winner by Spurgeon. And it was excellent, excellent read. Uh, if you're in a teaching, preaching ministry, just evangelism, just a really, really solid book that I would encourage anyone who wants to just continue to grow. And uh, of course, evangelism, but the teaching and preaching of the word. I thought it was a great read. So thanks, Javiel. Thanks. Uh, I think he goes to, I want to say Redeemer Reformed Church, but I don't know if that's right. But yeah, just, it was it was cool getting those. And then again, keeping up with him and those guys. So do a TRG yeah. meetup. If you're in the area, if you're going somewhere, ask on the group who lives there. I've already determined I'm going to get in Georgia sometime. And I told my wife, I will meet up with the Hendrix. It is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's got, I'm, Let's do I'm, it. It will happen at some point. Our families will get together. It's cool. Like you said, there's always a we in TRG. There are people like Micah. I mean, me and Logan knew each other. There's many guys in the community mm-hmm. that I'm like, these guys aren't just like, oh, I'm in a group with them. They're legit. They're friends, like people I care about. And so right. when you get to meet them in person, it is, it's really cool. 
um, they get to do that. So figure it out. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Micah, man, I'm seeing what you got in the docket and I heartily approve of that. What's your reco? Yeah, real quick, just want to go back to what Adam said. Fantasy Footballers Podcast, excellent. I'm pretty sure those dudes might be Christians as well. I saw the host, Andy, with a Five Solas uh, t-shirt on before, and they Hey-o. just there's other things I've I've heard and said about that. I think those dudes might... But they're know the they may take part in, uh, <laughs> in the liberties. Yeah. <laughs> uh but anyway my my reco is um uh, yeah i saw it the other day as of recording it is the 30th anniversary of batman the animated series the seminal uh Yo. cartoon from the 90s uh that really it, 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 for for my money that is the voice of Batman. Anytime I oh. hear Batman in my head, it Absolutely. is Kevin Conroy's Batman. Yeah. It is Mark Hamill's Joker, all that good stuff. Just, I, I know everyone, uh, 95% of people listening to this have probably watched Batman anime series, but go back and do yourself a favor, watch an episode or three. It, it that. still holds up. I've watched it in, in recent, you know, past couple of years. And it's like, yep, still holds up beautifully. So yeah, go watch Batman, the animated series. Yep. It still goes hard. I actually own, I own all of the seasons except for the very last one. But man, that it's it's oh, such a good. It's it's surprisingly dark, but that's that's for uh, that's for another day. Um, but speaking of things that are well, kind of dark, but also animated. Uh, my reco, one of them at least, is uh, Mobile Suit Gundam 0080 War in the Pocket. I know it's a mouthful, but it's uh, one that I watched recently. I've been. For those of you who follow me on Twitter, you guys know I've been watching through every single series in the Universal Century timeline of Mobile Suit Gundam. And uh, this one I watched recently, it's only six episodes long, but man, does it pack a punch. And fun fact, one of the main characters is voiced by David Hayter 10 years before he was Solid Snake. So oh, wow. that really threw me for a loop hearing him because I was like, this sounds, is this Solid Snake? And I looked it up on awesome. IMDb. And it was. So I was like, even more reason uh, to recommend it. So, you know, kind of cool little way that the world, those worlds of gaming and anime blend a little bit. So it's really cool. A lot of, God, it has a lot of um, great action scenes, just a really good story. It, it It's very efficient with its six episodes. So I highly recommend it. Uh, if you can watch that, stream it, uh, anything like that. My other reco is one that I've been kind of, you know, we've been eating good as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fans uh, for the last couple months. We had Shredder's Revenge. We've got the Cowabunga collection. Now's a good time to kind of get back into the Ninja Turtle feels. And I started reading the last Ronin comic that came out however many years ago where it follows one lone Ninja Turtle who is on a quest for revenge because of reasons i don't want to spoil it because that first issue is just insane um especially the reveal at the end of who you're following but it, it's really good i highly recommend it if you are into comics maybe you've been playing the ninja turtle games and you want to get more of that highly recommend reading the last ronin um it is it, it's really good it goes back to its its uh, early comic roots uh, in terms of how like just mature it is um and how the i mean there's violence but it's not like it's like what you would expect from daredevil i guess i could say that but it's it's mm-hmm. really good this is the last ronin if you're in ninja turtles go check that out other things you should do though if you like what we do here at trg why not uh go over to patreon support us uh for uh, words are hard guys words are hard if you like what we do here trg on patreon supports as low as a dollar a month gets you early uncut access to the show and all sorts of good stuff head on over there and consider lending your support before i go any further though adam dude thank you for coming back on the show man it was nice having you back dude this filled my soul for a while (laughs) it's so good to be back it's so good to be cutting it up with you guys just hanging out talking video games there's no doubt i miss it um Mm -hmm. We do need to make this more of a regular again. I can't do it every other week, but I can yeah. do it more than once every nine months. <laughs> and so, <laughs> uh, yeah, and I say that as I'm about to have another kid. So maybe, and you're about to have a kid. So maybe I can't, yeah. um, but this has been, again, it's been my joy. Thanks for the opportunity just to come on. And I know I've talked a lot uh, this episode. You guys have been gracious with that. Talking about the Steam Deck and just, 
getting to be on here. So very appreciative for the opportunity yeah, to come back. Yeah, man. Well, it's good having you back. It's good hearing from you. And I'm sure our listeners were ecstatic to hear from you as well. Maybe even uh, some of them are going to be looking into that Steam Deck as well and adding you on, on Steam and getting you more than just two <laughs> friends uh, on Steam as well. But uh, but yeah, as always, dear listeners, if you want extra content from us, there's links to our YouTube channel and things of that nature in the show notes. Uh, website, Twitter, social media, everything is in your show notes. Y'all can go check that out there and follow, interact with us, have some fun there. And uh, yeah, but until next time, be a deer, keep it locked here, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Reformed Gamers, the podcast all about theology and gaming. TRG is edited by Deer Ear Productions, so thank them for the buttery smooth tones in your ear. If you're looking for extra content, head on over to youtube.com slash the reformed gamers. The Reformed Gamers is entirely fan supported over on patreon.com slash the reformed gamers by our dear patrons. The following deer are at the producer level or higher and will forever be thanked at the end of each show. As long as their pledge comes through, or we forget to update the audio. Those people are David Matthews, Mr. Butts, Richard Moroccan, and Wesley Ray. Thank you for your support on Patreon.com, keeping our controllers charged, and supporting Logan in his never-ending quest to collect them all. Platinum trophies, that is. So be a deer and keep it locked here. Keep listening. We'll catch you later.